The bonus round continues from QuakeCon 2015 in Dallas, Texas, and this week we tackle a genre of games, stealth. What's it like playing a stealth game, and how's it feel when you just can't finish that game because of a stealth sequence? I'll chat with Andrew Reiner from Game Informer, Adam Sessler, and Bethesda's Pete Hines, right now in the bonus round. Hey, welcome back to the bonus round here on GT. I'm Jeff Keeley with Adam Sessler, Pete Hines, and Andrew Reiner from QuakeCon, and this week we're going to talk about the evolution of the stealth mechanic. You guys have Dishonored coming out uh, next year, which has lots of stealth in it, but uh, it feels like stealth as a mechanic is one of these things that, you know, I think we all have had experiences where we, we hate it at some point, the trial and right. error gameplay of like trying to sneak through, whether it's like Metal Gear Solid or, you know, old Return of Castle Wolfenstein. Um, but stealth now, I feel like, is coming into all these games, and you know, every big game now, I feel like, has some type of stealth mission. Whether you're playing Grand Theft Auto and trying to sneak away from something, or The Witcher, um, you're always trying to figure out uh, how do you use stealth in games and gameplay. So let me start with you, Cesar. I mean, stealth is a mechanic. When you when you realize you're in a stealth sequence in a game, yeah, do you get excited or do you get frustrated? I feel better about it now. Yeah. There's a point where I'm like, I don't think we should call them stealth games, I think we should call them slow games. Exactly. Now, I'm doing the same thing I'm doing in a shooter, just at like an eighth of the pace. Yeah. And you know, I would have to say, not just because we're here, but Dishonored really kind of, I think, opened up that you can still be sneaky and move very quickly and have that sense of satisfaction. It also always give people the option. You can be sneaky or you yeah. can be more aggressive and give the people the choice, which I think developers have now moved to versus in the past it was like, no, this is a stealth sequence and you either have to be stealthy or you're just going to continue to die again and again and, and get frustrated. Yeah, unlike, you know, like a first person shooter where the combat is fun, you know, sitting in the shadows as Sam Fisher in the Splinter Cell game yeah. for like 20 seconds waiting for a guy to go by is intense right. once. And yeah, then when yes. you do it again, you're like, you hear the same, you know, dialogue and you're like, okay, no, I don't want to do that again. And I think it was, it was, it was playing, God, this is a game everyone's forgotten, but the game 13 from Ubisoft, yeah, yeah it was the cell shaded yeah, shooter, it had a lot of stealth, and that's what I was like, if you're going to have a stealth game, you'll see you have really good checkpointing, because yeah. to Andrew's point, you get caught or you get killed. It's like, good, I'm gonna crouch, and move really slowly, it'll take me two minutes to finally get to the point that was the problem last time, and now I'm just annoyed. He found me, he shot me, he killed me. And well, that's the other thing is stealth sometimes, when, you know, the fail state, if it's, sometimes it's like you fail and you can still kind of get out of it or sneak out, yeah. even if they detect you, but other games where it's like, no, as soon as you get detected, it's like you're instantly dead because 14 guys come on you and you can never escape. Not fun. Yeah, not fun, but we still see that in games today. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there are yes. hard fail states like that, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I usually like it where you're given the option like Dishonored yeah. or, you know, the new Metal Gear. Right. You know, it, it's kind of crazy to think about Metal Gear where it was, was yeah. you, it was a top-down view, you couldn't see anything around you, and now they're doing stealth in an open world, like one of the biggest yeah. open worlds ever created. Like, yeah. that's going to be a mechanic in that. It's, it's kind of crazy to see where it's gone. Yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely games where it is, it is core to the experience, like it is a stealth game, um, and then there are uh, plenty of games like Dishonored or a Fallout or even Elder Scrolls or you know role-playing games, action games, um, even even Wolfenstein, um, the New Order had some of it where you could take a stealthier approach, you could yeah. take a more kick in the front door and go guns blazing. I think it's because there's so many games that add it as a component where it's an optional thing and you hit that point where you're frustrated because you failed the third time, you can just kick in the door and blow everybody away instead. Like having that flexibility and the player choice and making it optional as opposed to forced, a lot of times changes it from being frustrating to being like, well, maybe I'll do it this way or well, I, I clearly can't figure it out so I'll just do it this other way instead. That Giving the player that power, I think, um, and having that flexibility is, is pretty important. Yep. I also feel like now, you know, games are, they do better with playtesting and things like that where you can sort of adapt to stealth. Where I think, you know, you remember games 15 years ago, just, they were just way too hard and you just get stuck and you get frustrated because you'd go through a game and it's like, this is the stealth of, I cannot figure out how to finish this. And, and then it, you're it, it wasn't, it, did, it wasn't satisfying enough that you saw the benefit of having to play it that way. Like, you know, going back to Wolfenstein, you know, when you're sneaking around and you, you take out a guy with a knife, it's like, ooh, that's pretty good. I feel pretty awesome right now. And so stealth, you want to do it but again. it's still like action as exactly. opposed to stealth for like, like, I'm in a shadow, now I'm in a different shadow. Yay, I won. Like, it's right. not quite the payoff of like, <laughs> this shadow is way better than the last shadow. Also, especially when you go back to the old Splinter Cells, like, you, just, you start to think, like, what is wrong with everyone's vision? Like, how are you <laughs> not seeing me just because I'm in a shadow? It hey, really feels kind of forced. I'm breathing on your neck. <laughs> you still can't detect me here. Is yeah, this is the reals one. That's, yeah, the trial and error. I remember some of those old Splinter Cell games, they were just so fresh. And, and that, that is a thing that I, I, I won't mention the game, but I, I did actually say to my wife the other day, 
when I failed for, like for the fifth time, like I don't know what the person who designed this wants me to do. And I think yeah. a lot of times stealth games can trip up because it does simply become a case of whatever it is I think I'm supposed to do clearly isn't right. So yeah. what does the game want me to do to just be done with this and move on? And that, right. that sort of pain wall can be pretty... I, I think that's actually an interesting issue that we're seeing in a lot of games where you know the, the notion, and sometimes it bears out true, especially in the case of Todd Howard, play as you want and the game will support whatever play style you have. I think we say that, it sounds like a noble sentiment, but that the designer has a more preferred way that they want the player to play the game. Specific. Yeah, yeah, and they're not communicating that and that creates frustration. I think it's also you just don't know how to sort of prioritize how you're supposed to read the world no, you around want, like, you. You want games to be Playable. Like, I think developers want people to be able to play through their full game and not get you know 25% of the way in and hit this stealth sequence and like get frustrated and then turn away. And so it used to be you know old days with PC you could at least quick save. And I remember you know so many games where you'd like quick save, quick load, like within like seconds. You know, yeah. Just like oh, I just got past it. Like, like, Fail, like, try again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Those games where you like quick save, quick load just to try and get through the sequence. Or then you know other ones where you'd have the old you know even the old id games where you'd, you'd have like you know invincibility codes and god codes and stuff just to get us through a sequence. On console games, you can't really do that that no. often now. I mean, there are not many cheat codes, so it's like you, you sort of are stuck, and you cannot get through the sequence. I mean, Pete, as you guys, you talk about Fallout, things like that, I mean, you guys obviously do extensive play testing in the office and stuff like that. These are the kind of things I'm sure the developers want feedback on, right? For sure. Well, and, and here's the thing, which is, you know, as we were talking before, like we mentioned Thief, yeah. um, you know, we have somebody uh, on, at Bethesda Game Studios, at Emil Paglarulo, yeah. who is a Thief fanatic. Like, yeah. he worked on the... On, on some of the Thief games. He loves stealth gameplay, and he's able to bring something that he's very passionate about and do, like, the Dark Brotherhood quest line, the Thieves Guild stuff, like, to bring all of the stuff he loves about stealth and have it be, you know, one part of it and be able to focus when we're doing playtesting as far as how that specific part feels. How viable is the stealth option um, in the game? Same for um, Dishonored with Ralph and Harvey and their team in figuring out ghosting a level and how do we you know yeah. is ghosting a level viable and is it actually fun or is it frustrating yeah. or painful or you know how do I feel and I think one of the things um, in uh, Dishonored was uh, I was playing much more like when I get up to a guy I just stab him in the neck because it's fun yeah. to stab guys in the neck in a video game <laughs> and only in a video game um, and then I started having some of the dialogue and, and, uh, and seeing the consequences where it was starting to get chaotic and like uh, decided I, I actually want to stop being violent. Like the game kind of made me feel different and I looked more for opportunities to be stealthy and to leave a guard there instead of killing them to move to move past it. But that flexibility and that option is something to your point, Jeff, that's got to be tested a lot. And, and in a games that are system based, it's, it's way more difficult because it's not scripted. It's not what does the game want me to do because it's scripted, it's more of a systems base, like, well, the game is checking for these things and looking for these things, and you have to figure out how to use your stuff to, to move through. And for me, a lot of it is dictated, which approach I do is dictated by the character and what you know the development team is trying to establish with that character. I want to kind of role play that character. So Garrett from Thief, you want to be really stealthy. You know, when you're yeah. making a pile of bodies with you know, arrows in their heads, it, it's just goofy, it doesn't seem right. Uh, whereas, you know, like Metal Gear, you have all these different tools where maybe you, right. every once in a while, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll uh, unleash a little bit, but... Uh, but it is funny where you're like hiding the bodies and it's like, right, it's, like right. it's so method. But, but with, with Thief, I remember playing it for the first time, I think especially because it was a first person game and like that just meant shooter to me, that untraining myself right. to not try to take out every enemy that's in a level, because you really can't, you, you don't have enough ammo, it, it's too hard, but that really was like, having to reassure myself that I'm playing the game as it's supposed to be. I think, I think it's another problem like, about ghosting a level. I think for a lot of players, it's like, why would you reward me for kind of not playing the game? <laughs> Which or for is, not <laughs> doing anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, say with Dishonored, where you can go all the way you know, through the game without killing people. And it's like, I mean, do you, ever, do you ever get telemetry or stats on like, how many people actually played it that way? Um, it's, uh, you say that, but I wonder, like, is there like, it's like there yeah. were 44 people that actually we did. We did actually, like I don't remember what it is now, but we did actually um, keep going back to check the, the achievement for finishing the game without killing yeah. anybody and, and checking to see, like, what percentage of folks. And it was low, right. but let's be honest, it's also super difficult. Like, right. I didn't do it, nor did I even attempt it. Because like, it, why did you get an achievement? You got like fifty point, uh, fifty yeah, or hundred points. Yeah, oh, like wow. you, you, if you play through the game without killing anybody, there's achievement that you right. get only for doing that. But you screw up once or you do like one dumb thing. 
I don't remember what it was. There, there was something that was happening where, like, if you, if you took out a guard and left them in the wrong spot, that they might get eaten by rats yep. accidentally. Yep. It, like, so it, it's not happen. enough to like not kill anybody. You got to be careful where you leave the bodies. Because, I just, like, I just replayed Dishonored and I had to go back and replay a level because of that. Right. I, I, I was perfect. Like, where's that body from? And I realized it was like, yeah, the rats got him. Yeah, you leave a guy where the rats are and the rats eat him, and like, well, you, yeah. you, you got him killed because you left him to die and get eaten by rats. So. Which, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just knocking people out. That's thinking, oh, part of the fun fine. of this stealth is like it can be people love a challenge. Yeah. It's like if you give them the challenge of playing through a game a certain way or like getting through this incredibly difficult level without you know any detection or whatever, right? Not even just you know an alert, but like no detection. People love that stuff. I'll try to do that stuff. I'll yeah. try to do the no kill playthrough. But then it's like you round a corner as you're like looking for sure. stuff in a the bathroom. There's a guy in the toilet, and you're just like, yep. you're yep. like, well, that's it. Now okay, I'm just so much. Gonna, now I'm now just everybody. Right. I, I, I think the Pete's point that if the system really supports it, then you start to have the incentive to do it. I mean, once, once again, going back to one of the earlier stealth games, No One Lives Forever. Yes. It was a lot of fun, but the audio in the game wasn't exactly right. So if you made a noise over there, all the enemies from the other side of the level just came running towards you. You know, that was not a system that really encouraged you to like really struggle and suffer through that. Right. Pretty fun. All right, well, there'll be more stealth coming up in games uh, ahead, and I'm sure a little stealth in Fallout 4, right? Absolutely. All right, uh, we'll be back next week with more right here in the bonus round.